here is Minarda Bradburyana, commonly called, well, all these things on screen. I mean, honestly, if you want to buy this little darling, please use the scientific name. There are so many Minardas and things that we call bee balm. <laughs> okay, so Minarda Bradburyana. Bradbury's Minarda is what I call it. Is it a good cut flower? Overall, I would say yes. Not the best of the best as far as cut flowers go, but pretty solid. When I am done showing you my reasoning on this near the end of the video, uh, we can have a fight about whether a native flower should be cut and put into a vase at all. Okay, so here is my reasoning on why Bradbury's Minarda makes a pretty decent cut flower. To be clear, what I mean by cut flower is a flower that you would go outside and cut with some scissors or some clippers, bring inside, put in a vase for your own inside enjoyment. Or perhaps you'd put them in a bouquet to carry. A good cut flower has a few qualities that people generally agree upon. So here they are. A good cut flower has a good look, a strong stem, a long stem, fragrance, something delightful to smell, and a long-lasting vase life. So it'll hang around for a while. So does Bradbury's Minarda fit the bill on these qualities? Well, for the good look, I would say quite yes. It has a unique and interesting appearance. Um, I think it looks really cool. Two, that strong stem. Yeah, Bradbury's Minarda has a strong stem. Absolutely. Does it have a long stem? Yes, it does. Uh, Bradbury's Minarda um, can get up to two feet tall, you know, so like a foot or two tall. Uh, and you can cut anywhere you need to along that stem. So I would say long stem. Yes. And so for number four here is fragrance. And I gave this one a maybe. <laughs> so Bradbury's Minarda is noted, uh, noted for its minty fragrance. And so I think a lot of people will go, yeah, yeah, it has a great fragrance. But oddly, I don't really notice the fragrance on Bradbury's Minarda until after it's done flowering and you're left with this little ball-shaped seed head. That is when I notice the minty fragrance really getting to be big. So, you know, in a cut flower vase situation, for, for me, I don't notice the fragrance at all. Um, so I gave this one a maybe. <laughs> maybe. And for number five then, the long-lasting vase life. So for this last one, I don't know. And so I did a not particularly rigorous scientific study that included neither controls nor replication nor any collection of metadata at all whatsoever. What I did was go outside and I do what someone might do who wants a cut flower. I cut a single stalk of Bradbury's Minarda and then I stuck it in a cup of water. That cup of water went onto a table where I could enjoy it. This seems to be in keeping with how people handle cut flowers. So it seemed fair enough. Um, of note to you then, the table where I had it was never in direct sunlight, it's sort of a medium brightness kind of room. I change the water every day because that's what people do or what people are supposed to do. Did you know that the number one best way to keep a cut flower going strong is to simply change its water every day? There's all these various tricks that people swear by, cut flower hacks. People love that word, right? Hack. It's a hack. Um, but the one thing that is not really a trick and it works great is just changing the water every day. Okay, so here we go. This is Bradbury's Minarda right after I cut it. Not a bad specimen, right? Um, you can, I, I didn't cut the longest stem on it, but you can see it's got a long stem. It's a strong stem. It's holding up the flower head quite nicely. I also cut a stem that had a bud on it that was not yet in bloom just to sort of see what would happen. So I have a blooming flower and a not yet blooming flower. Here we are now, 30 minutes after I cut it. It's only a half an hour later. You know how there's some flowers that you put in water and then like a moment later, it's wilted all to hell? Well, this 30 minute check-in was to be sure that this flower was not like that. And it's not, it looks fine, right? 
And here we are now six hours later. So six hours after I cut the flower. And it's just another early check-in to make sure that it's not going to immediately go belly up on us. And it still looks fine. If you can stand the uh, painted mint green wall behind. <laughs> okay. 24 hours after being cut. Looks pretty good still. It's not wilted. The flower looks just dandy. Um, the stem is still up and strong. The leaves are fine. Although I will say that a better looking bud vase would make it look better than this janky old plastic cup. Um, and if I'm being picky, I think a small bunch of Bradbury's Monarda would look better than a single one. But that is not the experiment. This is just to see how long it lasts in a vase. You will notice uh, how the unbloomed stalk I cut is now starting to bloom. So that's a slick trick. I did not quite expect that. <laughs> So here we are now at 48 hours after I cut it, um, or well, okay, let's just say two days. Two days after being cut, not wilted, the flower looks fine, um, more of the unbloomed stalk is now blooming. The stems on these are all still strong, holding up the flower heads, it's, uh, still looking good here. So three days after being cut now, still looking good. The stem is still strong. The flower bloom still looks nice. The unbloomed stalk is making more blooms. So that continues to be kind of cool to look at, right? And when you like look in really close at Bradbury's Minarda, I mean, it is a very cool looking flower, which does make it kind of a neat cut flower. Because like, you know, it's really close to you on your table or your bedside table or wherever you put your cut flower vases so you can kind of really get in there and look at it and muse about how cool nature is. So four days after being cut and I would say we're turning. <laughs> the purple has become kind of deeper and darker, which is nice, but we're clearly now seeing the beginning of wilting, right? If it's my cut flower in a vase, which it is right now, um, I would still keep it at this point. Uh, the petals feel like they're turning into little tendrils, which kind of look neat, uh, which is why I would still keep it around. The unbloomed stalk is still blooming and it is looking nice. Um, but I am kind of getting the feeling that it won't completely bloom all over. It's kind of doing what it can, but it's not going to give me the full show. Here is five days now after being cut, and neither of them are looking all that great anymore. I personally would probably still hold on to them longer, but that's just me. Learn to let go. Um, you certainly wouldn't want to still have a vase with them out looking like this when your mother-in-law comes to town or the PTA president comes over. Your knitting circle or your book club would probably be sympathetic unless the PTA president is in your crafting circle. Oh, geez, what a mess that would be. Okay, well, anyways, most people would probably let these flowers go at this point, but, you know, in the for, for science, I'm going to hold on to it just a little longer. This is six days after being cut. Oh, fine. <laughs> I would probably get rid of them now. Uh, certainly now we're, we're wilted and not looking good. And this is certainly when any rational person would get rid of their cut flowers. Um, the stems, the stalks, interestingly, are still 
themselves not bending over. They're still strong and tall uh, in there, which is nice. But the flower heads now and all the petals and everything are, are donezos. So, okay then. Looking back at our list of good qualities for a cut flower, we have loosely, scientifically, filled in that last quality of vase life to being that it looks good for three or four days in a vase. And if you have stalks in there with just buds on them, you can get maybe five days because that bud will start to bloom a little bit and look nice longer. Again, I do want to repeat, I changed the water every day. Uh, So, you know, do that with your cut flowers. So then um, to go back through, does Bradbury's Minarda uh, have the qualities of a good cut flower? Obviously, it has a good look because it's It's a freaking cool looking flower. It has a strong stem, which we have seen. Um, It has a long stem. You can cut many different lengths, whatever you need. The fragrance, I gave that a maybe because I don't really notice it having any fragrance at all when it's in my home as a cut flower, but uh, it does get a minty fragrance that I notice after the bloom is over, although I don't know if everybody agrees on that. Um, And then now we know for the vase life, three to four days maybe in a vase, and the buds will bloom maybe for five days. And so there you have it. That's why I ended up saying Bradbury's Minarda makes a pretty solid cut flower. The only thing that would really make it better, in my opinion, is a longer time in the vase before it wilts and dies. Maybe another day or two would be nice. But maybe I'm being greedy. Okay, that's it. So you can go click somewhere else now unless you want to fight. Oh, you're still here. Okay, so let's throw down. Should we even be using native flowers as cut flowers? So this isn't a huge debate in the native plant community. It's a mild one. So we won't maybe have a full brawl here. We'll have maybe a heated discussion. Are you ready for a heated discussion? We're not fighting, honey. We're having a heated discussion. Okay. Um... So our first view is, don't you dare cut a native flower and put it inside in a vase. Don't you dare. View two is, yeah, okay, cut a couple stalks, have a little native flower vase on your table. That's wonderful. So here's what the people who believe in view one might have to say. The problem is that we have replaced, mowed over, sprayed, hybridized and destroyed so many of our native flowers and plants and where they grow here in North America that we have created a very large problem for ourselves. It's called the insect apocalypse. Look it up. The absolute collapse of so many insect species and genera due to our actions is creating real problems for us right now. Don't believe that we're missing some insects? Here's a small but simple way to convince you. Think back to your childhood. Think back to a family road trip or a road trip with friends. Remember what you had to do every time you filled up with gas. One person is filling the gas tank. Another person is trying to scrape and clean the bugs off the windshield. When was the last time you've had to really scrape and clean bugs off your windshield? Ah, you see the problem now, don't you? I won't go into all the things we rely on insects for. Look it up, but oh goodness, we're in a peck of trouble on this one. And so, replacing non-native or hybridized plants in our yards with native plants absolutely reverses this trend. Anyone who plants native plants can see the impact immediately. Your yard goes from nearly zero bees and butterflies to being a little busy bee and butterfly theme park. Cutting any of these flowers down so we can enjoy them for a few boring days inside, have we not as humans already cut down and mowed down to hell enough native species? Leave every single bloom up. Leave every single seed to disperse. Let every single bloom feed precious insects. Let every single leaf provide for every precious insect. Do not Cut them down, you monster! We really need to protect our insects. And cutting blooms off flowers, there's so few native flowers even left in our country. Don't cut them, you maniac. Okay, Uh, let's look at what people say about view number two. 
if you have big patches of native flowers that are delightful in your yard, cutting down a couple stalks will make a difference to how many insects can use that plant. But I, as a gardener, should get to have all the enjoyment possible from my beautiful native garden. I brought all these native plant species back to this area. I'm supporting thousands of insects and birds and fungi and bacteria and worms with this yard. Thousands of insects I'll probably never even see. And let us not overlook, if I cut a few stalks and put them in a pleasing looking vase, not a janky plastic cup, will friends and family who come over not see that vase? Will they not go, oh my, how lovely? And then I get yet another opening to say, why yes, it is lovely. Plant native flowers in your yard and you too can have a bouquet like this one. Isn't that worth something? And let's not forget that there is really good research showing how having plants inside our homes does great things for our minds. Greater memory, greater concentration, less depression, less anxiety. And with those things going on in my cranium, I will be more likely to continue working on the native plants in my yard. Oh, and here's another thing. If someone loves cut flowers and they cut all the native flowers out, they cut all those flower heads right off, that does still leave foliage behind. The leaves! Tons of insects use those leaves, the stalks, even the roots are busy places to be. It's not all about the flowers and the obvious pollinator show that comes with them. There's other things that make native plants important. So a native plant, even missing its flower, still has more value than a non-native plant. Ah, Well, I think we've made it through that little spat intact. Ah, So let's crack open a beer or sip some tea and be pleased at how we can disagree but still be friends. However you feel about cutting a native flower and putting it in a vase inside your home, do continue to plant native, my little Minarda lovers. <laughs>